Today was going to be the first day I went fishing for the season. What is it? April? It's April 3rd, right? But uh, and I was talking to my friend Mike, um, and we were like looking at the weather, and it was looking warm. It was looking sunny, but wind. Wind looked like it was going to really, really, really shut us down. 25 to 30 mile an hour wind. So we kind of decided not to do it. But I thought it would be a good time to talk about dry fly fishing. Um, with the wind howling in the background. I don't know if you can hear it, but but it's a lot of wind out there right now. So it was on my mind. It's been on my mind now for months. Um, it just basically the things I got to remember when I go dry fly fishing, which is uh, most of the time it's 80% probably this year is going to be 80%, maybe a little bit more. I dry fly fish a lot. The Delaware River, uh, uh, the west and east branches. I don't go to the main stem that much because I do a lot of weed fishing, and um, the main stem have some spots that that you can that you can wade into, but uh, it's more of a boat river, it's boat section, I guess you could say. So dry fly fishing. I wanted to talk about all the things that I try and remember when I'm going dry fly fishing on a tough river, uh, mainly the Delaware, and what I think. A lot of people should keep in their mind when they're fishing a tough river, um, and 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 a lot of this stuff you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be like really 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 well if 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 you gotta fish a tough river meaning a lot of fish but a lot of fish that get pressure so they're very smart they've been been alive for for a bunch of years and they've seen fishermen and they kind of know uh, you know you know that they got to be weary of them. Um, I think this will make more sense to those people that, that have done this sort of stuff before. Um, if you're fishing like mm, club water or, you know, stocked water, heavily stocked or, um, you know, automatic feeder type water, this is not really the video for you. It really doesn't. This is not going to matter. Are they good skills to have? Yeah, um, but probably not for the water you're fishing. Uh, this is like a this is wild fishery type skills. Um, so I'm gonna basically talk about from the time that you arrive at the water to the time that you net the fish. And we're gonna start from the beginning. So it's 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 I think it'll be easier to understand if we go through the entire process. Now the first thing and I have a little cheat sheet behind me here. Um, and so if you see me look up, it's 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 because of that. Um, so the first thing essentially is arriving at the spot. If, if you're if you're gonna park, if, if you're parking right next to the pool that you're fishing, don't pull up like with your music blaring and your windows down, and and don't don't get out of the car and slam car doors and yell to your friends and stuff. Um, I would even suggest probably yeah just park a hundred feet away from that pool if 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 the water's right there on the on 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 the street. Maybe park a little further away and, and walk down. Walk a couple hundred feet. It's not going to kill you, right? Um, and then when you do get to the water, don't get in the water. Just stand on the bank. Maybe even take a knee. If, 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 if fish usually rise, if it's not a very wide river, and fish usually rise kind of, you know, within, you know, 25 feet of the bank, 30 feet, take a knee maybe, and just watch. You don't know how many times I've walked up to a river and looked out for 10 seconds and said, this place is dead. And then all of a sudden, I see a rise over here, and I see a rise over there, and I see a rise down there. And sometimes they were rising maybe even those 10 seconds, but your, your eyes didn't adjust to it. It kind of takes you to settle down and almost like uh, just take in the entire scene and you you'll see the disturbance just maybe out of the corner of your eye but you got to be you don't you don't want to be like looking you just just calm down try and take it in and there's a these fish they don't rise one every second right so it you, you might see one within 30 seconds a minute two minutes but if nothing's happening don't get in the water there's no point okay don't blind cast don't get in the water and just start casting to where you think maybe the fish were like you know last season when you were there and you you caught a nice fish. Forget about that. I know that you gotta go to work tomorrow. I know it took you three hours to get to this spot. 
I know that um, you haven't been fishing in two weeks. I know all of these things. Trust me, okay? I used to live in Manhattan with my wife, and we used to come up on the weekend to fish. And we, it took us three hours to get to the spot. And I, and I know what it feels like to be under pressure to try and catch fish because you're going fishing, right? But you're going fishing, you're not going casting, okay? If you want to catch good fish, tough fish, big fish, blind casting is not the right method, okay? And I get it. If you want to blind cast, I'm going to give you a tip. If you want to blind cast, learn nymph, right? Because that's all nymphing is, is blind casting. If you want to cast, nymph, I'm telling you. If you want to dry fly fish, wait. That's what dry fly fishing is. It's just waiting for the right opportunity, optimal time. That's that. That's what it is. So, so let's say you're there, you're at the bank, and within 30 seconds of arriving, you see a fish rise. It's safe to say that fish was rising before you got to the bank, okay? So, if you think it's a good fish, and it's worth going after, and worth getting in the water, and maybe disturbing the water, and maybe spooking another fish down on the other side of the pool that you haven't seen yet, then get in. Um, but give it like three or four rises. Make sure that fish is coming up in the same exact spot, and it's, maybe it's not two fish that are very sporadic, but you can't really see it because you're not watching it for long enough. Just make sure they're coming up in the same spot. Maybe even, you know, just in you know, just in the back of your mind, how long is it taking for them to come up and, you know, into the second time, the third time. Now, if you get there and you've been standing around for 15, 15 minutes and nothing's happened and then all of a sudden something comes up, don't get in the water after three rises. Don't do it. Um, the difference between a fish that's been rising for a half an hour and the difference between a fish uh, versus a fish that's been rising three times within 45 seconds is completely different. It's completely different. You have to be a lot more weary over the fish um, getting spooked that's only rose like three times. Okay, so just wait there. Wait there. See what happens. I'm gonna tell you something. I've gotten, I've seen a fish rise. Oh wow, look at that! Finally, got a fish rising. Get in there. I wait over there and like slow as like anything and I'm halfway over there and the fish stops. Why? Because the fish wasn't really, you know, it, it, it just, it just wasn't in that, 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 that zone. It wasn't in that, it wasn't in that zone to eat. And it might come up on another place or over here or over there. And that's what happens. He's like cruising fish. That's like a, a, a term you hear a lot. It's like a cruiser. And he's kind of, he's eating, but he's not in the zone right in that spot. He's going to come up and eat over here, and then he's going to go over here, he's going to eat some over here, and he's going to come over here and eat some over here. And you're going to be chasing that fish around all day. It's it's not worth it, okay? Wait for that fish to come up in that same exact spot a whole bunch of times. That's what you want. That's what you want. So let's say you do have that fish that's coming up consistently. And... Um, you feel like they're they're in that zone they're going to eat right well that's when you want to get in the water right so you want to get in that water you want to do it slow and i tell you i have i got i got big boots all right and it is hard for me to step in that water and not make a huge commotion it really is tough you got to point your toe all right, you're not trying to belly flop the boot into the water. You got to point your toe. You got to slip it in. Hell, if I know that 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 water is like two feet deep or something right there, sometimes I I I almost sit down and sort of just slip into the water. It sounds a little stupid, but yeah, let me tell you something. You ever try and step into water that's two feet deep while your other foot is standing on uh, like a banana peel slick bank? You'll be able to take a fall right in the water, and then you you, you think you you think it's hard fishing. Now you wait until you do that. It's done. It's finished. So just enter the water very slowly, very slowly. And as you're you're wading over there, don't take your foot out of the water and crash it back down. Just slowly pick it up and 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 and, and move it slow. Um, you know, don't try and don't don't kick over any rocks and just be very cautious. And the thing about wakes, this is another thing, is when you step in the water, there's going to be a wake. It doesn't matter how, I don't care if your foot is pointed like a piece of loose leaf paper. 
it's um it, there's going to be a wake there's going to be a wake but the fish the fish care less about wakes and more about noise and crashes of your boot into rocks and they see wakes they see beavers they see fi other fish they see birds there's deer running through the water they see wakes um it, they see wakes but they don't see big gigantic boots crushing gravel so be less worried about a wake and and you still should go slow and yeah wakes you know can do can do some damage but it's more about um that boot on the gravel um i mean a lot of people and i don't know if this is a known type of thing but in the catskills if if you wear those those studded boots um dry fly fishing you're done for you can't wear a studded boot um because the, the 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 studs they just scrape against the rocks i mean that cuts through the water if you think a fish can't hear <laughs> fish if you think a fish they can feel that vibration from uh, from hundreds of feet away so it's a it's 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 about the boot hitting the rock and the gravel so be cautious as you're walking over and this is as you this is another thing so where to stop okay you're walking towards that fish you're approaching that fish where do you stop okay there's two spots that i stop i stop when i can see the fish eating or i stop when i'm at the spot that i'm going to be casting to if i can see the fish eating though i stop period i will i will approach on the angle that where i'm heading towards the area that i want to cast from and as soon as i can see the fish eating i stop meaning as soon as i can see a fly going down the water and being eaten by the fish i have to see very specifically the fly floating down and then disappearing this is important i want to know before i arrive at the spot what's going on okay if i'm 60 feet away and i can see the fly floating down the river and then get eaten and i know what that fly is i want to stop right there and if i don't have that fly on my my, my tippet i'm going to change it right there if I still can't see at 60 feet, whatever it is, because I'm going to be closer than 60 feet to cast, um, I will approach until I get to that spot, that casting spot, and I won't go any further. And if I still can't figure out what they're eating at that point in time, I start trying to do some process of elimination. And essentially that means is that if, if, if you do not see flies coming down the water and getting eaten, but you still see a fish coming up, it's like one of three things. The, the first thing it could be is, is that they're eating spinners and that spinner is laying so flat. It's like just under the film. And you can't really see at the angle and maybe the sun is hitting it a certain way or there's a little bit of a, you know, a riffle on the water or something. And you can't, you can't see it, okay? The second thing is that they're eating something that's too small for you to see. So a very small blue wing olive or a trico or something small. The other, the third, and probably the more unlikely, I would say, is they're eating subsurface. And the only way they'd be eating subsurface that you could see would be is if you don't see a mouth coming up. You just see a, a, a like a tail fin or the top, the top of the fish. Okay? So all you see is the top of the fish and a tail. But you're not really seeing a, a mouth come up. And another thing is, is that if you're seeing this, is that it's unlikely that they're not taking something off the, the surface. You would maybe see something like that. And it's just, it, it, it's, it's, that's the unlikely scenario, the subsurface, meaning like an emerger that's really not at the top yet. It's unlikely. To figure out if, which one of the other two it is, got to look down at where you're standing, watch flies come down the water, and, and you scoop them up and, and, and look at them and you should be able to figure it out even if you can't see that specific thing going into their mouth you could by process of elimination you should be able to figure it out and only then do you start casting and um, 
so this leads into probably the most important thing is 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 the casting part because you're basically going to be right on the fish you're going to be right on the fish as you approach and you're also going to be right on the fish with your line and uh, the first thing is is that if you're going to miss okay you got to miss short don't miss long okay don't start whipping out zillion foot casts because when that line hits the water and it's right on top of that fish you're going to spook the fish i guarantee it so be short in the cat skills i mean if somebody is not in the cat skills and they hear this they're going to be like are you kidding with me but it's true in the cat skills leader and tippet we got at least 15 feet okay we put it this is what i do i put it to get a 12 foot leader 4x and i put a it, it, at least a three foot piece of 5x on the end and then i evaluate once i'm there but it's at least 15 feet probably more like 16 feet and then who knows what happens after that but it's it's 15 feet probably more like 16 feet and we've i've gone up to 20 feet okay and it's really tough to cast a 20 foot leader and tippet i know it trust me okay but sometimes that's what it takes so miss short okay miss short the next thing is you make that cast this is another thing people are going to be like i are you kidding with me <laughs> don't mend okay there's only a certain time where tough fishing can withstand a mend um, it's rare okay and if it, it it if you do it it's got to be a small tiny mend don't you know it don't you can't it just don't mend is really what it what it comes down to reach cast that's what you need to learn it's difficult it's a hard cast to learn i have i don't i i haven't mastered it it's easy for me some ways a re well, what is a reach? A reach cast is mending in the air, amending the line in the air, not mending it while it's on the water. So you are putting a mend in the line before it ever hits the water. It's easier to do it like this, crossbody, for me, and I think for most people, it's harder to do it like this. So, if 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 um, if the water's coming down this way, you you have to mend this way. It's harder. Um, for me, it's harder. Reach cast. That's what you want to do. Um, don't mend. Um, it spooks fish. And that's really the only thing I can say. If, if, if you're on tough water, it spooks fish. You put that first cast over. Let's say you cast sort of close. Maybe it doesn't go over the fish, but you cast sort of close. You didn't mend. You let, let that fly drift. And it goes right past the fish. And nothing happens. What do you do? You yank it right out? No, you don't yank it right. Out. You 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 wait till that fly drifts way past the fish, like six feet, at least, and then you do not pull it out. You just slowly bring it in. That's what you're doing. You're not yanking. You're slowly bringing it in, and you get that fly back in your hand, and you wait. That's right. One cast, and then you wait. Okay. This is your first cast. You put the cast over, and and nothing happened, right? Maybe it was near, maybe it wasn't that near. It doesn't matter. It's the first cast. Put the get the fly in your hand. Look at it. Watch that spot. Make sure the fish comes back up again. Okay. Don't put another cast over unless you see that fish come up once or twice. And the reason is is because if you put the cast over the first time. And that fish, after it went down and ate whatever it was eaten before, or whatever, is sitting there under the surface, and they detect something is kind of off. They hear something, maybe when you cast your, your foot rubbed on the, on the ground, or maybe they, 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 they felt that line hit the water. Whatever it is, if you put another cast over there before they come up again, and forget about what, what just happened, you're going to reinforce that that thinking in the fish that says that there's something wrong and that'll be the end of it so wait till they convince themselves that it wasn't anything and come up and start eating again 
see them rise once or twice, you remember that spot. That's another thing. Is that sometimes when I get to a spot and I watch a fish one time, I sort of kind of forget where that fish was. I don't know. I, I, sometimes it happens, and um, it all looks the same out there, right? Where is that distance? So watch it again. Miss say, okay, this, this, I remember now, he's, he's X amount of feet away, and I was short three feet last time, so, you know, let's, let's pull out a hair more line, or let's do a little bit more of a, 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 a with my arm going forward, and let's try and get, let's do a little bit better of a cast, let's try and get it over, the fl uh, over the fish, get the fly over the fish. You make that next cast, let's say it goes by again, nothing, you wait, till it's six feet or more and you slowly bring it in, you watch the fish again come up. So this happens, let's say, two or three times. And then let's say you get one over that fish. Right over the fish, nothing happens. What do you do, you change the fly? No, okay? It's not the fly. I guarantee you, I guarantee you it's not the fly. Why do I know it's not the fly? Because if you remember back in the beginning, I said, when you get up close to that thing, you f you figure out exactly what they're eating. So you should know exactly what they're eating. There shouldn't be any like, hmm, no, I guess they're not eating that. No, no, that's what they're eating, okay? So you put on what they're eating. So why aren't they eating it? Well, it's your presentation. It's always presentation. It's never the fly. If it is the fly, in the small chance it is the fly, it's not like, oh, I was throwing a March Brown and they're eating coffins. No, okay, that's not what it is. It's maybe the fly is a hair too big or a hair too small, or maybe it's just not sitting low enough in the water. Who knows what it is, okay? But it's not that you got the wrong fly on. It's maybe that the, the fly just needs to be a hair different. And that's really it. Maybe you gotta put a parachute on instead of a, a, a spinner. But there's not 10 different options of flies on that water, so you're not going to be, anytime you hear somebody, oh, you know, on the 10th time I changed my fly, he ate it. Well, what do you think? That's because there was 10 options and you went through all of them and then the 10th one, the, the you picked the right one? No, it's because on that 10th that one, it just so happens that you put a good cast over them. If they, th if, if they think it's real, they're going to eat it. Okay, that's, that's it. If they think it's real and it's close to the size of what they're eating, they're going to eat it. I guarantee it. So, so why, so what is it, the, the other, the 95% of the time that they're not eating, it's about drag, it's about pres presentation. And drag doesn't have to be that, like, this thing is flying across the water like a Hell's Bay or something. It's, it, that's, it, drag could mean, very simply, that the fly is coming down and all of a sudden, it little it rotates on the water. It just er, gives it, you think um, a mayfly, er, you know, is 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 doing some ballerina move on top of the water. It's not, and they see that thing. Hmm, that's that's not a real fly because real flies don't rotate on like a lazy susan on the water. It doesn't happen. So you're not going to be able to see that. You can't see a fly that's this big, 35 feet away, rotate. I uh, half a turn. You can't, okay? So, because you don't see it sliding across the water, you think that, oh, there's no drag. Well, there's drag. It's just in a different way that, 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 that you know. Um, rotating of a fly is, that's a problem. So, try and put over a good cast. Try and put over a good cast. The reach cast really is, 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 is the way to do it. And don't get crazy. Don't get all oh, you know. And don't get if don't get frustrated because this this has happened to me before, where I I put over a bunch of casts and it, it looks like they're good casts and I, I get frustrated and I start just trying to put more casts out there. It it put one good cast over them and you'll get it. So just take your time. It's not about putting twenty bad casts and maybe they'll eat one of the bad casts. No, this is tough fishing. This is not easy fishing. So 20 get bad casts, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get 20 misses. Period. You need one good cast. That's it. One good cast. And 20 bad casts is probably going to result in spooking the fish. Now, let's say, let's say you're lucky enough to put a good cast over this fish and the fish eats it. This is it. This is, this is, this is the end of the game. Well, It's the end of the game, hopefully, for this fish, but it may not, it's not the end of the game for the fishing, 
Okay. I got, I got a, a good story. Me and my friend Mike were on the Upper East, and I see this just a boil of fish in a spot the size of this room, very small, but there must have been 20 fish in there, and they were going nuts, and I was like, wow, this is it right here. This is it. I, I walk over very slowly. I, I was actually approaching from behind, and I get even with it. I toss the fly in, one cast, and I pull out like a 19 plus inch fish. But here's the deal. When I hooked that fish, I immediately pulled that fish downstream. Okay, immediately. I got the fish out of the pool and in downstream as quick as humanly possible. And as soon as I got that fish out of the pool, Mike went in, one cast caught another one. He brought it out downstream. Then Ned the fish went back, caught another one on like two casts. If I would have caught that first fish and took him upstream, what do you think would have happened? I would have destroyed that whole pool. So be mindful about when you catch a fish. What else is going on around you? Who else is around you? Who else is fishing? You know, sometimes maybe you want to blow up someone's pool. They were being a jerk. My friend Jason told me a story one time. Guy was being a jerk. He, so he caught a fish and let the fish run right into it and blow up that guy's whole pool and the guy left. But <laughs> that's like 0.1% of the time that's going to happen. And, and um, so just be mindful about, about what's happening around you. Get the fish into safer water, essentially. Safer for you, where it's easier to net the fish, and safer for other people that you don't screw up that thing. Uh, you know, people know that you caught a fish. Okay, people know you don't have to let the fish run around the entire pool and show like, hey, check out that fish. You don't have to do it. They know that you caught a that you caught a fish. Just get it in the net and do whatever you got to do and and put the fish back. And that's it. If 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 you follow these things, it sounds crazy with all the all the stuff that I've listed. It sounds crazy, but you going to catch more fish. And here's the interesting thing: is I really only talked about one skillful part, and that's the reach cast, right? I only talked about one thing that requires physical skill. All the rest I, I talked about kind of is like mental skill. Walking slow, being gentle, watching the water, deciphering what fly is being eaten. Well, you know, this, all this stuff is actually like kind of like the hard part in a way unless you you focus on it once you focus on it you slow down you can do all these things and this is like this is really like a major part of the game and if you can add in some good casts let me tell you something you're going to catch some great fish the mental part of this game is really really big um, and this is what i try i try and remember all this stuff when I go out and fishing every single time, I try and remember, I try and do all of it. Most of the time I do like seven out of the eight things or six out of the eight things or nine out of the 10 things, whatever it happens to be. And when I, when I do happen to do all of them, I usually have a pretty good day. So keep that in mind when you're out on the water. All right, see ya.